Could this Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. easter egg mean that Wanda is under Hydra spell? Hmm. Hey, it's Kristen, and today we are talking about episode 3 of WandaVision. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and drop down in the comments and let me know what did you think about this new episode. You know, we really start diving into some of the big mysteries in this one. I know the first two episodes people have been a little bit mixed about, but this is where we really start getting into some juicy stuff. So, let me know what you thought about it, and also let me know if you caught any of these easter eggs. This new episode of WandaVision brings us into Technicolor, channeling the sitcoms of the 70s like The Brady Bunch or The Partridge Family. Family, as we see Wanda and Vision dealing with their newfound pregnancy. We get to see a bunch of pregnancy gags from Wanda going through the trimesters in a matter of hours to her powers going out of whack during contractions. We also see them play up classic ways to cover up a woman's pregnancy in TV shows from putting on an oversized jacket to hiding the bump behind a bowl of fruit. You're not fooling anybody. And her finally delivering, you guessed it, twins. We also get some big reveals when it comes to what's going on outside of this time warp of a world. Let's break it all down. One of my favorite scenes this episode is when Wanda is preparing the nursery for the new baby. Suddenly the butterfly mobile comes to life and Wanda says that she didn't mean to do that. We even see the stork Wanda was painting come to life. It makes me wonder if this could be a manifestation of the baby's powers. Eagle Eye fans may even notice the type of paint Wanda is using is Simser brand. Jeremy Simser is a storyboard artist working on WandaVision, Doctor Strange, in the Multiverse of Madness and She-Hulk. Taking a look at the commercial for this week, we get an advertisement for the Bubble Bath Hydra Soak, clearly calling out the evil organization Hydra. The messaging in the commercial is very clear. Escape to a world all your own, where your problems just float away, when you want to get away without going anywhere. This to me is another example of Wanda escaping reality. On the other side of things, there seems to be a reference to this blue soap in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which might give away a lot of information. I would have figured it out a long time ago if it wasn't for the mind control soap. Yeah. Wait, what? That blue soap everyone uses? Hydra loads it up with chemicals. It seeps into our bloodstream and plants false memories into our brains. They want us to believe this is a magical place. But don't worry, I'm clear. I make my own soap now. Could this connection be a hint that Wanda is not in as much control as we think she is? Maybe she's under Hydra's spell. Wanda and Vision go back and forth over baby names, one favoring Tommy while the other wants to name the child Billy. Ultimately though, they get to use both names as Wanda gives birth to twins. Tommy and Billy are the names of twins that Scarlet Witch and Vision have in the comic books, later coming into their own as Young Avengers, Wiccan, and Speed. In the comics, Scarlet Witch used her powers to warp reality to create the twins, not knowing that she used two fragments of the demon Mephisto's soul. When their souls were absorbed back into Mephisto, they were destroyed but reincarnated into two new boys. We spoke about Mephisto a bit in my first video, which I will leave a link to, but with so many references to the devil by Agnes from her joke that the devil's in the details and her pet bunny Senor Scratchy, Scratch being a nickname for the devil, even the reference to Big Red with gum. It seems like Mephisto could be a real option here. Dr. Nielsen even makes a reference to a trip to Bermuda, which could be a subtle nod to what's going on, as the Bermuda Triangle is a region where many ships and planes are said to have disappeared mysteriously with hints of paranormal or extraterrestrial activity, especially when he says that small towns are so hard to escape. The Bermuda Triangle is also known as the Devil's Triangle. Don't forget, the devil's in the details. At the end of last week's episode, even Vision is beginning to notice something is off, and that feeling continues, especially around the neighbors this week. We see Herb trimming trees, and strangely continuing to cut into the wall separating their yard. Later, we see Vision begin to question that things aren't right, and Wanda jump cuts back to change the scene. After the babies are born, Vision is outside and sees Herb and Agnes having a private conversation that seems off. When Vision confronts them, they continue to act weird, concerned about Geraldine. They claim she has no family, no husband, no home, and seem terrified that she's in the house with Wanda. It seems like they may spill some big secret, but they don't. This is a good place to note Agnes's brooch again and her potential connection to Agatha Harkness. And the idea that she might be involved in this. Maybe everyone in this world is playing a part and really knows what's going on. At the same time, inside the house, Wanda shows her first signs of knowing about her past by bringing up her twin brother Pietro and singing a song to her baby boys and her native Sokovian. This is an important moment because previously she had no knowledge of things like where she came from or how long she and Vision were together. This is the first time she's addressing something from the past in the Marvel Universe. When Gerald 
Geraldine says your brother died because of Ultron, that doesn't sit right with her. She notices her necklace, which is a sword logo, and calls out the strange symbol. Here's where we really see the kind of power Wanda has. When Vision comes back inside after hearing weird things about Geraldine from the neighbors, Geraldine is nowhere to be seen. Instead, we see her being thrown from this warped reality into the real world. Clearly, this was done by Wanda to protect her sanity and sort of create a safe space and a safe bubble for her to continue to live out this sitcom-style fantasy. She lands in what appears to be a sword base right outside of Wanda's reality. When it comes down to it, WandaVision continues to build an incredibly rich and detailed world within this sitcom alternate reality. Wanda and Vision have such great chemistry together, and it's such a joy to watch their interactions on screen, even when things seem to get a little bit suspicious. And I think this episode in particular does a really great job of setting up the rest of the season and the action that's coming. This has become one of my favorite Marvel shows to watch, from the impeccable details of bringing gags and technical aspects and connections to classic sitcoms to life, to the research that goes into bringing some of these more obscure comic book references to mainstream audiences. I'm hoping that in the next episode we get an exciting balance of diving into sitcoms from the 80s, seeing Wanda and Vision as new parents, and maybe even learning a little bit more about the future Wiccan and Speed, while also finally exploring the real world and what S.W.O.R.D. is up to. If you guys like this one, you can check out more of my WandaVision videos right over here, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!